Well, good afternoon. This is uh, Dave Crocker. Uh, we're on Warriors, Heart Chargers, and Patriots, connecting the little dots to the big dots. And I'm privileged and, and actually honored to have Christy Robinson with me today, Chris Robinson with me today, because uh, she was with us in the 96 to 99 timeframe of Carl Vinson uh, and was just one of these people that you saw all around the ship doing great things as a photo mate on, and uh, just... Um, you know, people love to have their picture taken, but more than that, she was a vibrant soul on the ship. I've had a lot of discussions with her um, about, uh, about why she joined the Navy. I want her to articulate those to you. It, it's better for it to come from her. She had a 12-year Navy career. And like I said, she's been, uh, I think, three years or close to three years with 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 me and Vincent. And um, the best part of this whole thing and the fact that she's on the screen with us today is that this is 2024, and we saw uh, each other last in 1999, and yet we're still connected, and I'm still as interested in her well-being as I was then. So that, that's sort of where we're at. So thanks for coming on, Christy. No problem. Um, so I want to go back to before you joined the Navy and what you were doing, um, and you know, did you have a sense of where you were or who, what you wanted to do? Um, you know, it was, and, and then finally, uh, uh, this part of the, what got you to want to join the Navy? So where were you, what were you doing and what sort of influenced you towards, towards the Navy? Well, when I was in high school, I wanted to be a radio disc jockey so bad, but, um, I didn't have the means to pay for college. And so it was, you know, either I get scholarships, which I didn't or pay for it, take out student loans. Um, however, with that being said, I got to thinking about it and I realized that I was going to party more while I was in college versus actually study. So, um, I followed a long line of, um, uh, people in my family and I decided to join the Navy. So were, there were other members of your family who were in the Navy. Yes. My dad was in the Navy. My uncle Ed was in the Navy. Um, both of my grandfathers on my dad's side were Navy. Well, one was Coast Guard, but we'll give it to him because he was there during World War II over in Hawaii. So they um, asked you to do, to want to do this. Yeah. So it's, it was a family tradition. I, I turned down the Air Force and decided to go Navy. And it was one of the best decisions I ever made. Well, that, that is delightful. So you actually really sort of knew who you were before you made this decision because you had all of this influence around you, right? You you knew that there was an opportunity to go. I'm just paraphrasing for my own purpose here. You knew you had the opportunity to go to college, but you also had this family history of service that, that was attractive to you. Am I, is that correct? Yes. We'll uh, you know, and I wanted to get, get out of this little town that I was living in. And I knew that that was one of the only ways I could do it. That's a, I hear that from so many people. So you 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 go to the uh, you you go to the the uh, recruit the recruit center you 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 sign up you get all the stuff ready to go, and you're off to a recruit training command. Can you, unless I've missed something, uh, you know you can you can certainly fill it in here. But can you talk to me about boot camp and how it affected your life, how it changed you, uh, how it altered your approach to relationships with others, whatever whatever comes to your mind. What were the things that that when you left there, you went, holy cow, I, I'm, I'm a much better person. I learned this, or I'm, this is now important to me, or you know, you know, that sort of, of, of thing. Well, um, what was really cool is that I was one of the first female companies to go through RTC Great Lakes uh, back in 94. And the biggest thing is I came from a little itty bitty town that did not have a lot of minorities. Right. And so I was put into a big soup sandwich and we had to learn how to get along. And it I came out better for it because I didn't look at it. It became a thing where I just I even to this day, I don't I, I look at what's within. I don't look at the outside at all. You know, if you're a nice person, you're a nice person. If you're a douchebag, I ain't going to give you the time of day. But that's where. Um, as far as learning how to work with people, um, where I learned how to do that. So that's important, right? I mean, you and I are now in our civilian lives. We recognize that there's places where people just stay in their little cube and they don't, that's all they're just concerned about whatever they're accountable for. 
and have no idea what the people around them are accountable for and how you could help them, right? And that's one of the things that you learned during that eight week period. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. You know, and we learned how to rely on each other. Where, so your parents, so your family had Navy training in their background, but when you got out of recruit training command, uh, AKA boot camp, were they surprised? Were they sort of taken aback by how you changed? Um, they were definitely proud. They were not able to come to my graduation because um, I graduated right after Christmas and there was a huge snowfall in, in uh, Chicago. So, you know, weather. But um, when I came home in January, they noticed that I walked a little taller, stood a little prouder, um, and that I acted a lot more grown up. You know, and I've been to so. several carriers, well, quite a few since I retired, I've been invited out as to, to escort some of the DVs that want to go out there and see the ships. And the first thing I tell them is, to your point, I'd like you to respond to this. I said, when you get off the, 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 the carrier onboard delivery aircraft, you're going to be doing a lot of noise, a lot of things going on, and you're going to want to go see this and do that. But I said, the first thing I want you to notice is the deportment of the young men and women walking around on that ship. You know, uh, the eye contact, the shoulders back, the yes sirs, yes sirs, yes ma'ams. And they were truly amazed at uh, the, the level of um, just, uh, it, was, it was a sign of mutual self-respect, right? Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, that's what I got out of watching people like you on, on Carl Vinson and, and then every coming in prior to that. Was, was that what you're speaking to in terms of the, the, the self-respect piece of this that you learned while you were at boot camp? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it just, you, you learn how to think of yourself more because, you know, right. they, they take you, they break you down right. and then they build you back up into, you know, you are worth more than what you were when you came out of there. Yeah. I, I, it, it's, it's a, it's really a miracle factory as far as I'm concerned. And of course, you know, better than I, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the various uh, battalion or divisional commanders that they put in charge of the various groups of, of, of uh, recruits are cream of the crop people. They're, they're not picked there because they're slaggers. They're people that understand the discipline piece. And they understand they only have eight weeks to shape whatever they're going to be able to shape, right? Mm -hmm. You had an advantage because, again, you had family background. And so you sort of have a, you had some of that already built in. But you and I both know there's people that get into recruit training command that have they're 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 just an empty pallet, you know. You've got to you got to figure out where you're going to go with that. So you got out of boot camp, and you went to a helicopter squadron. Is that correct? I did. I was stationed at HS one in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, I was just telling Christy when we talked a while ago. I I had a, a instru I had an instructor tour there, uh, probably in the oh gosh, early, late seventies, early eighties, uh, after I'd finished my first tour at HS fifteen. And prior to going to be a test pilot. So yeah, I got to fly off that seawall many, many a time. And you were there for how long? Um, I was there from 95 until 97 when they decommissioned. Okay. Um, any takeaways that you want to talk about on this I mean, tour? I mean, I know that you get snapshots from every tour, right? We all learn from tours and we learn good things. We learn bad things. And knowing you you learned you you took the good things and kept them in your brain and you took the maybe the not so good things through your 12 year navy career and just put them in a parking lot saying hey i'll never do these things right or these i'll never let these things happen anything you'd like to talk about with regard to hs1 so it was it was really weird because when i first got there you know they send you to, to the line shack or not to line shack to first lieutenant i went in un undesignated and uh, the guy there was like, you look like a nice kid. I'm going to go stick you with the, the career counselor. And from there, they worked with me to get where I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. So where a lot of people just got sent straight to the line shack, got lost in the shuffle. And, you know, that was it. A lot of people just did their three, four years and got out when I was at HS1. Um, just because of how that's they got lost in the shuffle. Yeah. Um, like I said, I was very fortunate that I started working with a career counselor right off the bat and they afforded me the opportunity to go to the photo lab there on Jacksonville and um and learn things. Well, that, so. Yeah. so I was talking who was I talking? I was talking to somebody else where I was talking to John Audrey. You might remember him as our admin officer on Carl Vincent. 
And uh, he spent 38 years in the Navy. And uh, uh, and in, the reason he was able to go from an E1 to 06 was because he was lucky enough to find people who wanted to help him. And he was also aggressive enough to go ask for the help. And, and I suspect you were too. Uh, you, it's, it, you know, sometimes you make your own luck, sometimes luck happens for you. But um, but it worked for you because, like I said, then you went to photo uh, PHA school. Is that right? I did. I was I I helped decommission the the school there in Pensacola too. Wow, I didn't realize that. So then now you're off to Carl Vinson, right? Yes, and I was the first female photographer on board the Carl Vinson. You were one of the first group of females on Carl Vinson, which yes. is in, in, in a much larger spectrum is. Is 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 bigger than 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 just a single person, but um, uh, but and that, and that had its own challenges. It was a we had a cultural shift. We could always say that it was just going to be an automatic thing that sailors were sailors, but we all know that there were actors that caused some challenges and problems there too. But um, so, what was your first? So, you, so did you join the ship when she was in port, or did you join the ship while well, she was at sea? So when I first got to the command, um, it was congratulations, welcome aboard, bring your stuff. We're going underway on Monday. And what day was this? So, Friday or Saturday? Uh, it was it, it was a Saturday. Um, so I had to leave my, my husband and my very young son at the time. I think he was just over a year old or nine months, something like that. And and they had to they were living with my parents in Port Angeles. We were in Bremerton. Mm -hmm. And he had to go and do all the the stuff as far as like get an apartment, all that stuff, because I was immediately hit the ground running uh, out to sea. So, so and that was, you're that was an experience. Up, and you'll see this big ship because they are big ships. Mm -hmm. what, what were you thinking? What was your thought when you saw this thing? Oh, shit. What did I get myself into? I mean, I mean, it happened to me, you know. I mean, I just, I thought, how in the heck am I gonna? What is this thing? This city, this, this menagerie of uh, of, of 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 people and metal and everything else. Um, so, uh, you were assigned immediately to the to the Photoshop on the ship. Is that where you were assigned? Yes, I was. Um, was there? It was funny because I had just come out of photo school and a lot of them didn't realize that I was a fleet returnee back into photo school right. and they so they were all you know uh, the first when we first got back from our first little debt that we did they're like yeah let's go meet up and then they and you know have drinks and whatnot and they all look at me thinking that I'm under the age of 21 and I was like um I'm 22 mm -hmm. so um but yeah it, it was definitely an experience um you know, I did my first underway. I think I was there for about two months before I had to go do um, my FSA tour. Yeah. Where I was on the Mestex. They're all fine. And then I, oh yeah, I, I actually liked, liked okay. it because um, I, I did all the decks yeah. uh, in the, in the, in the mess. Yeah. Um, and that was probably the best part because I got to yell at people when they got on my wet deck. Uh, when I was waxing it, you could do it too. <laughs> it's out of my mind about that. What were the? Let's you know from a, just a general perspective because I, you know, I, I'm learning. I still tell people today as I'm having these discussions that I wish I would have asked some of the questions not then that I'm asking now. I mean, you know, so you don't always have time. I spent as much time as I could talking to people like you and anybody about you know what you're doing and again connecting the little dot to the big dot, etc. Um, but we didn't spend a lot of time uh, talking about how you got there, right? You know, you know, you know what what got you to Carl Vinson, for example. And so, um, so there, you know, there are I'm sure good and bad experiences on the ship because we were so big and we weren't perfect. What, what, but what were your takeaways in general? What were the things that resonated with you that uh, helped you reinforce the things? build upon the things that happened at boot camp. And we're, if there were things that detracted from that, let's talk about those two. Um, the biggest thing was working as a team, learning how to work as a team and learning how to get along with people that you might not get along with. 
-hmm. you know, um, when I was cranking it, we had a tight knit group, you know, when we stopped in San Diego, they were all like, Hey, Chris, we want to go over to Tijuana. Will you hold our bags? Will we go to the strip clubs? And I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. (laughs) You know, uh, but you gotta, you know, feed me and drink me, you know, get, get me drunk. Yep. And uh, which that's a whole nother story in itself. But again, we were so tight knit as a little group there within the FSA culture when I was TAD yeah. that we could rely on each other outside of being at work. That's that's probably the that's probably the biggest lesson anybody could learn from any place that they're working. Um, and uh, what what were the so I you know I always felt like uh, when we could get people together and. And have one of our pep rallies that it was you know because we 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 did reenlistments at those pep rallies we did um and we we recognized people for various things as, as as they went along and it sort of built upon this one team one fight ethos was that inculcated in your culture from your perspective did we do a good job there or, or was it just what do you think it was just more words rather than actions well, I mean, it depended on, because you actually, when you said you were going to do something, it got done, but there were other people, um, other CEOs that I've had that where they said they were going to do it and it never happened, or they would drop the hammer and completely shut things down. Right. So, you know, um, but we knew we could count, you knew who you could count on. Right. That's fair. Was there... Was it, were there bad things, negative things? I, 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 bad is probably not the right word. Were there um, things that were not as good or, or negative or bad, whichever word you want to use, that, you know, that really didn't catch the attention of the right people that caused, you know, caused you to have to either work harder, work around things, feel uncomfortable? Because the worst thing that can happen is have someone feel uncomfortable in that, in that environment. Anything you'd like, uh, like to share there? No, not really, because, you know, most of the people, if I did have a problem or someone had a problem with me, it got squished in the bud pretty okay. pronto. Okay. So you were there with us for three years. Is that right? Um, I was actually on board the Carl Vinson from 98 to 2003. All right. So you were there for my change of command, right? Yes. I, I always ask that because we had it inside of a gym because the ship was in dry dock. And, yes, I was there for that. It was a, it was a, it was a great uh, because we we were so close to each other, and my 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 oldest son was our guest speaker, and he spoke to families and what it was like to grow up in a military family. And I would just see everybody sit. Either there are some people standing in ranks, but most people were sitting up in those stadium stairs, and it was just really great. It was it was a, it was really great to have everyone together. And I was just wanting to know if you were there. So you were there till two thousand and what? Now again, I'm sorry. 2003. Okay. Yeah. And did you have a follow on tour or did you retire after that? So um, I did. I actually went to Faso Trade Group Pack uh, Lamore. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was where uh, that was where I ended up getting out. Okay. And why'd you get out? Um, well, I was five pounds overweight and I couldn't lose it for no matter what I did. And so I was part of that whole push to, they, they got rid of me. Um, but it was also <laughs> time. <laughs> Say, I want to, I, I don't want to leave this point yet. So they uh, asked you to leave the Navy because you were five pounds overweight. Yes. If the five it, pounds it overweight my... had not been an issue, would you have stayed or, or, or no? Oh, I would have done my 20 years. I'd probably still be in right now. Okay. All right. Interesting point. Um, yeah. Um, but one of the other big factors was I needed to get out and raise my kids. That's important. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because they were becoming quite feral. As a matter of fact, my youngest was my feralist child and he ended up joining the Marines. So <laughs> it's, it's a continuing hit line here. It's influence upon influence upon influence, Christy. You know I mean? He, you know, I mean, p- kids see their parents are gone all the time. They're deployed all the time. They miss them. But there was something about your service and the way you presented your service to them that made him want to do that. You you know that, and and, um, oh, and yeah. I'm very very proud. But he was actually he doesn't remember any of it because he was two when I got out. Well, but yeah, yeah, okay. I still think there was an influence there, one way or the other. But um, or maybe oh, even, definitely, yeah. So, 
Um, so you got to, what, what, and I interrupted you. I'm sorry about that, but I really wanted to get, catch that point. And so you were talking about the five pounds, but you were going to say something else. Would you recall what it was? I'm oh, it was just that after, you know, that five pounds, no matter what I did, the ultimately I looked at the big picture and I needed to get out to raise my kids. Yeah. I, I want, I, I only have one point that I want to make, but uh, it was you and I talking, um, prior to the starting the interview and you talked about um, um, some challenges you had and, the, and how the Navy's changed in, in, in a good way. And I, I think it's really important for people to hear that from you. Uh, and it reinforces maybe some of the things that are going on in the Navy today. Uh, could you uh, just, you know, spend a couple of minutes talking about where you were, what, what you discovered about yourself and, and how that might have been a uh, change had the, the Navy adopted some of the programs that, that they're adopting today. So the one thing that I've noticed, because, yeah, I do keep my ear to the ground when it comes to the Navy and all the new bells and whistles and whatnot. One of the things that I wish that they would have promoted more when I was in, even as early as 95, um, is the mental health aspect and being able to get help. because we were basically told to cover that shit up and go on because we have a job to do. Take care of it on your own time. And I see a lot of people that, that are out that have, you know, have problems, myself included. I spent seven years on the couch because I was depressed and didn't know, didn't know which way to turn. And huh? then I finally sought help. So. Yeah. And again, I stepped on you. I'm so sorry. What, what kind of help did you get and how did you finally get to that help? Um, I finally started seeing a therapist. Um, they put me on medication. Uh, I still see a therapist. I go to group. Um, but it's, um, it's helping me learn how to live with depression, anxiety, the whole, everything yeah. that I have. Yeah. 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 And it's, it is, it's a, it's a mix mash. It's a potpourri of people. A lot of people running hard and fast, and 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 I and it's very refreshing for you to hear you say this because, um, you know, there are people pushing back at some of the programs that are out there. Um, I I, you know, I I I I think that when it comes to mental health, we have to have a um, sort of a clean, continuous path by where we can get the right kind of help for the right kind of needs right we whether it's uh immediate care at a, at a facility or whether it's counseling or whether whatever it is i mean it whatever the spectrum is doc kaufman or our doctor with me or on vincent would agree with me on that um uh, so uh you know i think but we're spending our money on so many other things as well but this mental health care problem issues the biggest challenge i think and um uh, I think that what I'm hearing you say is that if this had been something, so you, so let me go back. So in retrospect, when did you start feeling the mental anxiety? I'll call it mental anxiety for lack of a better term. Was it while you were on Vincent? I mean, were you, were, was it, was, were things building up when you were on, on the ship with us? Um, I was already, you know, after I'm able to, to look back at this and figure sure. out when, yeah. but it started in HS1. Yeah. Um, and it just continually built and, you know, you just shove it in a box and you have, you know, you have to do, you go about and do your work. Right. And the one thing that I, I would like to preface is saying that, um, these people who lead from the ivory tower yeah. don't see All right. what's going on down on the decks and they don't see that. Okay. Yeah. They've got a smile on their face and whatnot, but what's truly going on? Because a lot of us that have anxiety, a lot of us that have depression, a lot of us that have PTSD, we are very good at hiding it. Yeah. Well, you know, you can put it into a little uh, um, uh, garage while people, and when you see these people, right, just to let them think that there's no problem. Um, the ivory tower is interesting. I use that a lot in some of the dialogues I have because my contention is, and it happens everywhere. And in companies, you know, you have the big corporate offices where no, you, yeah, it takes four or five secretaries to get through before you can see the boss, right? Uh, and um, and I, I've always I've always recommended that uh, you know when I was a CEO in Vincent, I 
only spent time on the bridge when I had to be there. I had a radio and I was off and walking and talking. And that was because my job was where I had plenty of qualified people to run the flight deck and plenty of qualified people to tell the ship which way to go. And I had a radio in my hand. But um, but your your point is that's a great point. That is that is rock, that's rock solid on. And I hope people will listen to that point. That's one I've been trying to drive home. We we spent a lot of time trying to figure out well, what kind of training, what kind of count, uh, uh, mentoring do we need to provide at the various uh, warfare community levels of command training, right? And really, it's this is a no comment. This is a no brainer. This is not necessarily any training. It's it's a means to be able to make closer contact with with uh, with you and people like you by s sitting in your uh, protected space, right? So right. Because um, so, you know, and and speaking of of that, you know, getting to talk to people and whatnot. Um, I was talking to my boss. I had to take her to the airport last week, and I was like, uh, "We had one. We were a very tight knit group. Mm -hmm. We could rely on each other. You know, one goes down, the other one picks up." Um, one of uh, my coworkers had to go back to Guam because his grandmother's sick, and um, I I'd asked her on our drive over. I said, "Hey, have you heard from Joe?" And she, you know, have you text him or anything like that? And she's like, "I can't text him. HR issues because." If I text him and you say, hey, you know, I'm fine and whatnot, then they there's people that can sit there and turn that saying, oh, well, you didn't need to have the day off because you said you were fine. And I said, I think that is a very shitty situation because as a supervisor, I should be able to, if someone is sick and they've been sick for days or their grandma's sick, I, I should be able to sit there and reach out and say, hey, did you make it over to Guam? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and that just it kills me that supervisors have their hands so tied that they can't do that even during covid when i had covid my boss was not allowed to contact me at all yeah yeah it, it's it's um yeah policy sometimes get in the way and um and and that that's everywhere unfortunately inside the skin of a ship we have a little more leeway and a little more t tolerance if you will but but uh it, yeah it's yeah, there's a lot of stuff like that. So it's a great point, though. Great point. Uh, so that's really where I wanted to go with this. I, I mean, I, I want to know, makes, is there a point that you would like to make that I haven't asked about? Because I'm trying to keep this as even flowing and comfortable as possible. But I may have missed a point or missed a topic you'd like to talk about. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to open the floor and see what you have to say. Well, I have to say the one thing that I miss the most about being in the Navy is the camaraderie and, you know, even uh, living in base housing, being able to, you know, have block parties and being able to you know, just knowing that the person, you know, you, you had a good friendship with them inside and outside of work. That's what I miss the most. Mm -hmm. The thing that uh, social media has been a big help for is being able to bring back all of those people you know, from the ship, um, Stacy Norris, Anthony Norris, um, Dean Turney, you know, there are a lot of people that I hung out with when I was on the ship. And uh, I talk to them on the regular a lot now. That's great. You know, and and social media has been great for that. And it, it actually, you know, there's a lot of people in the community that, you know, thanks to social media, they're able to sit there and say that, you know, whether they got discharged medically or kicked out um they feel that they didn't get to finish you know and they're mad about that i know that i'm mad about it but i also know that i made a decision that benefited my kids in the long run I think, um yeah go ahead uh so you know that sense of family the fact that you know when we went to boot camp they you know finish what you start that's like one of the biggest things and um, it just, yeah, there, I just, there's so much that I miss, but then there's so much that I'm like, you know, I had a lot of fun. One of the biggest, um, things that you ever hear about this, you know, people on the ship is a bitching sailor is a happy sailor, right? Um, because, oh, I hate this ship. This ship sucks. We're going out to sea, whatever. And then five years down the road, God, I wish I was back on the Carl Vince and I had so much fun, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Um, the best memories that I could ever have. Me too. I uh, that's why I'm doing this. Um, I, 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 
you know, I, every CEO will tell anyone he's talking to they were on the best ship in the Navy. I, I happen to believe I'm the only one telling the truth uh, because uh, people like you now. There, all these other commanding officers are stellar people, um, and they're and they're XOs and they're command master chiefs. But really, it's the connection from you know from the from the captain down to the mess decks. I spent a lot of time on the mess decks because that's where I could have conversations and listen to people talking about what's ever on their mind. Um, so it's it was great. Well, Chrissy, I want I want to tell you I'm. I'm honored to be on with you today and um, and uh, consider you a friend and a shipmate. Shipmate first, maybe, because that means a lot more to me, actually, than friendship. Um, it infers to me that I'll do anything for you, which I would do. Uh, and um, and you would do that for me as well, I'm, I'm sure. So that's the mutual relationship we have. Uh, and I want to wish you the best of luck. You're, you, you know how to get a hold of me. We'll have conversations here, I'm sure, ongoing over the, over the next uh, many months and years. Um, but I wanted people to hear from you and, um, I thought you represented yourself extremely well today. And, um, uh, and, um, uh, there's a lot of people like you out there that ought to be heard in my humble opinion. Um, so I want to thank you. I want to wish you the, uh, a, a, a great day. And until we talk again, uh, my, my very, very personal best wishes to you. Well, thanks Admiral. It's been great talking to you. Um, shout out to everybody. Um, this I've been watching the podcast from the get go. So there's a lot of good information out. Uh, take it. So. Well, we're going to, we're going to see where they go. They're pretty free flowing. You know, I'm letting people say what's on their mind. And uh, as you can tell, it's, this is as informal as it can get, but, but people will pick up what they want to pick up out of it. Right. Oh, and, yeah. and, um, and, and it doesn't do any good for them to see this ugly mug. Uh, 24 seven, they need to be listening to the people who live the, who walk the, truly walk the walk. And that's people like you. So thanks so much. Oh, yeah. We'll be back in touch. Okay. Absolutely. Bye -bye. Talk to you later, Admiral.